What's up YouTube, Dante Lewis here, and today we're going over the bare basics, starting from the bottom and going all the way up with Logic Studio. Um, this is going to be a series of videos. I don't know how many I'm going to do, but when I'm done with the basic series, you'll be well on your way to take over the world. Um, I get a lot of novice questions in regards to Logic Studio 9, and I decided to just do the videos and show you guys what's up so you'll know how to do the stuff you guys are asking me to do. Um, I'm one of those guys I want to jump from A to Z, but I realize that I will have to know the basics to be able to get to Z or to even get to K or L, you know, so I can do the stuff I want to do because I'll look up a dope uh, tutorial or a dope feature in Logic and they jump so far ahead into exactly what they're doing. And I don't even know how to get there because I don't I didn't know the basics. But I changed my way of thinking uh, a couple years ago. And I realized that, hey, if I want to learn it, I have to start from the bottom up. <clears throat> so hopefully this video or well, these videos will help you guys and make life easier for you in regards to Logic Studio 9. So today we'll talk about tracks and creating tracks and starting, you know, starting, starting Logic up. When you first open Logic, um, you'll see the new tracks tab. Number is the number of tracks you would like to create. Type is uh, the type of track you want to create. If you want it to be an audio track, you will want to select audio. If you were using your soft synths, which we'll get into, um, you will want soft instruments. If you were using an external MIDI device, you will want to cl click external MIDI device. Fairly simple. <clears throat> Format. Is the type of track you want it to be. If you want it to be a mono track, if you want it to be a stereo track, or if you want it to be surround sound. Um, nine times out of ten, um, you won't be using surround sound unless you're, you know, scoring a movie or, or something like that. So, you know, just leave it at mono or stereo. And <clears throat> the difference between mono and stereo, for you guys who don't know, uh, mono is for, you know, if you want to record um, from a microphone or a guitar, or a bass, or a single kick, or a single snare from an MPC or a keyboard. That's mono. As far as stereo, if you had a, um, a guitar with a, uh, a, an effects pedal, that it would pan some of the guitar sounds left and right, you would want it to be in stereo. If you were recording a sample in from your MPC and the sample is in stereo, you would want to record the sample into the Logic, um, <clears throat> into your into the Logic system in stereo. Um, an arpeggiated synth from a Phantom or a keyboard you might have, you would want that in stereo. <clears throat> and the reason why I'm stressing this, excuse me, I'm catching a cold too. And the reason why I'm stressing this is because if you have a stereo source and some of the instruments in that source are in stereo if you record it in mono you will lose that stereo sound field so you might have in your sample you might have the lead guitarist playing far left and you might have the the horn section playing um far right if you record it in stereo you will still keep the same sound source but if you record it in mono instead of everything being separated everything will be on top of each other um I sample in mono sometimes, I sample in stereo, it just depends on how I feel, but that's the difference. You have to know what the sound source is and keep that in mind when you're recording it into your DAW. This correlates from Pro Tools to Cubase to whatever. Know the difference between your mono sound source and your stereo sound source. Okay. <clears throat> Input is if you have an interface and you have your microphone plugged into input one, you want to make sure it correlates inside of Logic. So just make sure you set the the inputs accordingly. Um, if you have your guitar in input one, and you have your bass in input two, and you want to record your bass, you will want to select input two for your bass. Now, you know, just because you have input one highlighted, it's not going to record what's in input two. So if you know you want to record from input two and you know your device is in input two, just set it correspondingly. Um, if that doesn't make sense to you, just ask questions. I think I explained it right. 
just make sure you have your devices and the input set accordingly. I'm going to stress that a lot because I get that question asked to me a lot. And this is stuff that people, simple stuff that people look past. <clears throat> okay, output is output one or two in your interface or, yeah, output one or two in your interface. You can have multiple outputs, but it just depends on what your interface allows. I know uh, something like an inbox or a, a, a mobile mic pre or something like that has two outputs. So you would set the outputs accordingly, just like on the inputs. So if you have um, uh, a Profar 2626 and it has eight outputs and you have your monitors in 7.8, you would want to set this output to 7.8. And if I have my interface plugged up, you would see I have a Profar 26. And it lets me, re it lets me select outputs all the way to from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7.8. So you just want to have your your output set accordingly too. And that's another thing people look past. I can't get my monitors to play. Well, if your monitors are in seven, eight and you have the output set to one and two, you're not gonna hear your monitors. So just switch the outputs accordingly to where your monitors are at in the back of your interface. <clears throat>